Hello and welcome back to this channel. My name is Victoria and today we're going to talk about the anatomy and the physiology of the inner ear. So here on the poster you can see a scheme of the ear. We started with a video about the external ear and then the middle ear. You can see those also if you haven't seen them yet. And now we're going to talk about the inner ear. It's the place for the vestibulocochlear organs. We will talk about both of them separately and you can see them here marked in blue. The semicircular canals on top are part of the labyrinth of the vestibular part and the cochlea is the part which is responsible for the conversion of sound pressure patterns into um, electrochemical impulses. So just as a short recap, we have the external acoustic meatus, which transfers the sound, wa sound waves to the tympanic membrane, which then moves the ossicles. So we have here a conversion from sound waves to pressure patterns, which then are given further by the malleus incus and stapes, the three ossicles, to the inner ear. Here the cochlea is responsible for transferring these pressure patterns into action potentials. How this is going to happen, I will explain later. First I want to talk about the vestibular part. It is responsible for balance and detection of motion, head movement and proprioception, so the spatial orientation and also for coordinating outer motor functions accordingly. It is made up of tracts and a system of channels called labyrinth and it is a hollow cavity in the temporal bone. The labyrinth is made up of three semicircular canals in a sagittal, frontal and transverse plane. Upon movement the fluid within these semicircular canals moves which helps the detection of differently directed movements. The movements are either side to side, so the no movement of the head, up and down, so the yes movement, and tilting, so side to side. Every of the canals widens inferiorly at their base to a sac-like structure, which is called utricle and saccule, which contains hair cells, sensing this movement of the fluid in the respective canal, and then sending a signal to the brain along the 8th cranial nerve, which you can also see in the poster. It's also called vestibulocochlear nerve and um, yeah, it's sent via action potentials. Then the cochlea. It's part of the auditory system and as I said earlier, it converts sound pressure patterns which are received by the movement of the ossicles into electrochemical impulses which are also sent to the brain along the auditory nerve. So a part of the eighth cranial nerve. Now I want to recap the auditory cascade. So sound waves are collected by the pinna or the external part of the ear. Then they enter the concha, move along the external acoustic meatus where they hit the tympanic membrane. Vibration or swinging of the membrane then moves the three ossicles, which are connected to each other um, on the more outer part to the tympanic membrane and on the inner part to the oval window. So they're building the connection between the external ear and the internal ear. So the pressing and the pushing of, of, uh, on the oval window by these ossicles causes the perilymph, which is a fluid, which you can see here in the yellow-greenish part Cochlea propagates these mechanical signals, so this movement of fluid where they reach the basilar membrane, which is part of this white and red part here in the inner part of the cochlea, where they then reach the basilar membrane, which is a fibrous tissue membrane lying between the scala media and the scala tympani. Those are subsections within the cochlea. This is also the place where the organ of Corti is located. I drew it in the poster. So you can see this inner part, the white and red part, are the different scala and the organ of Corti. 
the organ of Corti contains three rows of outer hair cells and one row of inner hair cells. These cells are also called cilia and they are separated by supporting cells. The front part of the hair cells are shorter and vibrate upon short frequency or high pitched sound waves and the back part of the cells is longer and it moves in long frequency waves. The movement of the perilymph causes the basilar membrane, the reticular membrane and hair cells to move upwards towards the tectorial membrane, which you can see here also uh, descriptive in the poster. It's the upper or the more to the left pointing black line inside this uh, cochlea that is upwards moving toward the tectorial membrane causes the hair cells to bend and they are connected to each other by tip link protein fibers which have ion channels embedded within them. When these hair cells move and bend these ion channels open and potassium and calcium from the endolymph moves inside the inner hair cells. This leads to a depolarization of the cell and the glutamate containing vesicles open. This leads to a propagation of the generated action potential via spiral ganglia to the brain. This was maybe formulated a little bit complicated, so I want to break it down in a more easier form. The cochlea is fluid filled and also it contains hair cells in the inner part of the cochlea and when these hair cells because of the movement and the swinging of this lymph start to bend then this opens channels which then leads to a generation of action potentials which are then transferred to the brain uh, and then further are further translated into language so that we can yeah, understand what this what all this mechanical signals were meaning. I hope this was understandable, it was a little bit more complicated topic, but I hope the video was helpful and if you liked it, I would be very happy if you could subscribe.